This is a GMMK Pro. Is it perfect right out of the box? No, but it's pretty dang good. And we'll find out more coming up. Hey guys, this is Betty from Switch and Click, and today we've got the GMMK Pro in the white ice colorway with the glorious GPBT keycaps on it. I've been using this pretty consistently for about a month now, and I know you guys are super excited about this, so we're just gonna jump into it right away. the original GMMK Pro packaging, you do get additional gaskets, you get a USB-C cable, it's white, it's braided. Honestly, it's not too much of anything special. You get a plastic keycap puller and you get a really small metal switch puller as well. But none of those accessories are anything I would typically use because Glorious is selling a lot of additional accessories, which we'll talk about closer to the end of the video, but I'm pretty excited for all of them. And yes, this is a bare bones build, so you do need to provide your own switches and keycaps, not stabilizers though. We're gonna start with talking about the different plates that are available because this build is super customizable. So the case itself does come with a stock aluminum plate, but there are other plates available such as brass and polycarbonate as well. I tested the various plates with the same Novakis cream switches lubed with Crytox 205G0, and you'll be able to hear all three sound tests back to back to back to determine which ones that you would like more. With the gaskets, the aluminum plate still felt really springy. The brass plate was very stiff in the sense that it was like, why do I have gaskets in the first place? And it just doesn't flow well together. The polycarbonate plate is the most flexible, but it's also the most loose. When I was pulling out keycaps, the switches just came out with it. It's not a good sign, and I did tell them that. In terms of springiness or flexibility, it would be polycarbonate as the, as the highest, then aluminum, then brass. And the plate that you go with will just depend on what switches you're using and what kind of feel and what kind of sound you would like. Polycarbonate plate is $20 and the brass one is an additional 50 and the aluminum one just comes with your board. It's a very heavy board made of CNC aluminum with a very big, deep, glorious branding on the very back. On the side, there are RGB diffusers that really allow it to have a smooth flowing RGB transition rather than being able to see each individual LED and where light emits from. So that's a really nice upside. The case design itself reminds me a lot of the KBD-75, especially from the side and from the back as well. The USB-C port is right in the middle. It is slightly recessed, but there's plenty of room here to be able to fit any cable that you would want to. On the back, you see that there are a lot of different screw holes and perhaps they did use too many screws for this build because when you're taking it apart, you really have to be careful not to lose any of them. And there are a lot of screws, keep them separated and keep them organized. There's no kickstands on the back, just four rubber bump-ons. And because the case is so heavy, these four rubber bump-ons are enough to keep it from sliding anywhere. On the front, you can see that it's an exploded 75% layout. And what that means is that instead of all the keys being crammed together, you have a different cluster for your arrow keys and you have a different cluster for these keys on the side here. And of course, there's that rotary encoder knob that some of you may hate, some of you may love. It comes in silver on the white ice edition, black on the black edition, and you have the option of buying a gold color knob as well. I've tried it on this board and it just doesn't look good from all the sides you can see that the keycaps are just slightly raised above the case you can see the switch just slightly but it's not high enough to really see the stems or anything beyond that when the rgb is on everything does bounce up off of the plate and it projects up quite nicely even if you have keycaps like these that are not shine through however in dim lighting it is hard to see these keycaps 
And looking inside, we do see that there are five pin hot swappable sockets and they are south facing. So no need to worry about any of those cherry profile keycaps interfering. You can pretty much use any mechanical switch in here that you'd like and any keycap profile as well. And there are goat stabilizers in here. These are Glorious's proprietary stabilizers and looking really close at them, they do resemble Duroc or Everglide stabilizers, except they have all clear housings. There are no feet at the bottom to clip. They are PCB screw in. And I would say all of them sound pretty decent, except for that space bar. I did re-lube all of my stabilizers, but that space bar needs a lot, a lot of additional lube to get it to sounding pretty decent. And yeah, those stabilizers are not the greatest of all time, but they are PCB screw in. So, you know, just, just toss them out and replace them with your preferred stabilizers and then you'll be good to go. I mean, at least it came with stabilizers, right? A lot of, a lot of kits don't even come with stabilizers. You have to buy your own and provide your own. So I guess that's not too bad. So the past month I've been using this a lot, like a lot, a lot for gaming, for typing, for work, for pretty much everything. There are some downsides. There's no manual in the box, so it is difficult to be like, what's on the secondary layer or how do I change my RGB lighting and things like that. But with the Glorious Core software, it's pretty easy to use. It's, it takes a little bit of tinkering with, but overall it's quite intuitive and it's not boggled down by a ton of extra features either. You've got three different profiles that you can edit on the software itself. I believe you can only save one profile to your board at a time by pressing that save button. You can do perky lighting, you can change overall lighting effects, you can modify different layers of the board by remapping things if you'd like that. And then you can change the polling rate from 125 hertz to 1000 hertz and with steps in between. And that's pretty much it. It's really simple software. I've hot swapped this keyboard about four times now, trying out the different plates, trying out different switches. And the sound overall is pretty good. Sometimes it's a little bit hollow, especially in the middle portions of the keyboard. The different clusters sound very nice, like the function row and the arrow keys. It's just the alphas that sound a little bit more hollow. There's just a lot of space there. Overall, I think it's pretty good and it can compete with custom kits like KBD75 or the Tofu65 at sort of the same price point too, while offering, you know, a few more features as well. Is it perfect though? It's not. It's going to require you to open it up, test it out, maybe mod it a little bit more, try it without the foam, try it with the foam, try double gaskets, try single gaskets. You know, it's gonna take a little bit of time to get it the way that you want it to. But at $170, it's really not a bad deal. It's not gonna be any of those customly crafted, beautifully designed custom keyboards out there, but it will be widely available and maybe you won't have to wait as long to jump into the hobby. It's a good stepping stone for beginners. Yes, 170 is a little bit steep for beginners, but it's a great way to experiment with the different plate materials, gasket mounts, all those things that weren't widely available for people to just purchase. There are really budget-friendly customs nowadays that are gasket mounted, that do offer different plate materials, that offer get all those great things. Maybe not with an aluminum CNC case though, so it's just preference, it's what you want. All right, so Glorious also launched a ton of different keyboard related accessories with the launch of their GMMK Pro and we'll be going over them really fast. Prices will be on the screen if you're interested in how much they cost. I do have concerns about some of these accessories, but it's nice to have the option to purchase it from one store. All right, so you've got a switch opener and I didn't personally like it because it feels cheap and plastic and flimsy and I definitely prefer an aluminum switch opener, but for a price of $10, it's pretty affordable. You also get a switch puller that resembles the Rama one a whole lot. It functions very nicely. 
but be careful because the paint at the ends will chip and sort of will go onto your plate of your keyboard and you'll just have to rub that off but it gets a little bit annoying so maybe you can pre chip all the paint off and then you won't have to worry about it. There's also a keycap puller but it's really tight at the opening so I personally don't like using it. You get a cleaning kit with a rocket blower, a cleaning cloth, and a small brush. Pretty nice. I use that rocket blower a lot. There's also a carrying case which is pretty cool. The handle's really nice and it's got a pocket on the inside that can hold some of your accessories like your keycap puller, your knob, your switch puller, things like that. But personally I don't use it often because my board just sits on my desk all day. And as I mentioned before you get the option of purchasing that gold colored knob or that black colored knob or the silver colored knob depending on what board you get. They also have a lube station and their G lube for all your lubing needs. It fits 36 switches. The lube brush is pretty cool. It's got an ergonomic grip. If you put it down, the brush tip doesn't touch your mat or your floor or your desk or whatever. So that's pretty convenient. So there's a palm rest. It looks pretty amazing, but it is way too large for me to use. You got coiled cables of different colors. I've got the white one. I do have some concerns for its plastic end and fitting into more variety of keyboards though but overall it looks pretty good and that coil is really thick and then you can buy the goat stabilizer separately if you choose with all that being said you can think wear shields if you want i've personally already gotten enough hate and i'm sort of over it if you want to hate you know take it take it somewhere else just take it somewhere else take it to your closet Think what you want, do what you want. It's your money, purchase what you want. Don't spend money on the GMMK Pro. If you don't want to, spend money on it. If you want to, I don't really care. Keyboards are a super subjective hobby and it's all preferential and that's why it's so much fun. You don't need someone else telling you that you're wrong. There's no black and white answers. Everything's gray, everything's gray. You can make your board sound the way you want, feel the way you want, look the way you want. Not how I want it, how you want it. So go out there and have fun and don't hate on others for liking what they like. But if you do want to go and get the GMMK Pro, check out the link down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. This video was hard to film and to be honest, I didn't even want to go through with this review and I know it's widely expected and all of you are really really excited for it but with a lot of the toxicity and the hate and the judgments that surround a board like this it's like I'm afraid to even put myself out there on the internet. I'm also a human being like I put on a strong front, I'm independent, I'm I'm strong, I'm resilient, you know, and like words, words are words, but you know, things still hurt. Like if you're, if you're going to say something bad about someone and like do it on the internet, like they're still a person, they're still a person behind that screen. Like that's, and you see my face too. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm not some robot thing that that makes videos. I have feelings too and all the creators do. We all have feelings. So when you say bad things, it like it hurts people, you know? And and having to deal with that over and over and over again, it's it's hard. Yes, you sort of get used to it and you instantly just want to like report, delete, whatever and hide whatever it is. And that works, that works, but you know, I still saw it. And and even if it, it's gone and no one else can read it, like I still saw it. And throughout the day, you know, it sort of bothers me. And it's like that nagging feeling in the back of your mind that you think about, like that hateful comment. And it's hard and it adds up. So just, you know, think about what you're typing or what you're saying before you judge someone on the internet. It's, it's hard to say. I like the GMMK Pro, you know? And 
I feel like I can't even express how much I like it because then I'm like a sellout or a shill, but, but I like it and I like using it, but, but a lot of this makes me not want to like it. I don't even know what to say. So, uh, anyways, I'm sort of thirsty and losing my voice. So I'm going to head out now and I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider supporting us on Patreon if you want to help us do what we do for the long term. Thank you to our patrons for making this all possible. And remember, you're human. I'm human. Don't hurt other humans. Thank you. See ya. Bye.